Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about freelancing, how to get freelancing jobs, how to essentially land the contracts, and why you might want to do it, and some things to consider. I mean, at the end of the day, there are a ton of developers looking to re work remote, looking to work for themselves as freelancers, and what I want you to do at the end of the day is be able to be a freelancer and shout, show me the money, which is a... Uh, Something about 50% of you don't know what I'm referencing, but that's okay. Uh, so we're going to be talking about freelancing and some tips to, to get you up and going and to make sure that you continue to land those contracts. Code everything. Might I thank today's sponsor, studywebdevelopment.com, for supporting the channel. If you're interested in freelancing, they have an awesome course at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing.html for a, a, a low rate of $97 with a 60 day guarantee, full refund, no questions asked, you have nothing to lose. And on top of it, you can use coupon code CT360 to save yourself an additional 20%. So if you're interested in that, go to studywebdevelopment.com. So freelancing is interesting because it is one of those things that is often thought, 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 after, thought sought after and um it is one of the things that i think we're going to start this video by talking about why you may want to freelance um oftentimes the idea and it's often comes from uh people who aren't developers yet they love the idea of freelancing and just working for themselves which is possible but it's also very stressful and it's, and it's a lot of hard work and it's one of those things where i would i would definitely can give some advice before you start to freelance um, that I've learned throughout the years of doing my own freelancing. And that is that you're going to, you're going to put yourself in some uncomfortable situations at times as you navigate through, which is one of the reasons that you should educate yourself about the freelancing process and how it all works. And, and, um, understand why you want to freelance. Do you want to work for yourself? Okay. Now, do you want to work for yourself or do you want to work remote? Cause those are two separate things. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, at a later date and uh, a later, later date being like in seven minutes. Uh, so uh, just, I want, I want you to kind of understand that when you're considering freelancing, really consider what it is that you want. Cause when you freelance, there's no guaranteed paycheck. If you don't get clients and you don't get contracts, you don't eat. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the fridge is empty, it stays empty. The rent isn't paid, you may be living in the car. So freelancing is a great thing to have, but it's hard work and, it, and you are in control of gathering your clients and you know sometimes that's why you may need a little help. So what's the first thing that you can do to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that you are gathering clients? Well, the most obvious thing is have an impressive portfolio. A lot of times people ask me, I want to freelance. What can I do? And I say, well, I, you know, I'm not being successful as freelancing. How can I change it? And I say, send me your portfolio. And unfortunately, it's just not at the quality of what someone's going to pay you for to be a freelancer. It, your your skill set needs to showcase that you have you have projects that are relevant to what it is that you're the people you're trying to accomplish or, or acquire as clients want. So. If you're going after people in the food industry, for instance, you need to have a beautiful food website or a site that is a beautiful shopping sort of website, an e-commerce store, if that's what you're going after. And if you just have, I don't know, a JavaScript calculator and not something that is more focused on web design with functionality, you're going to really suffer in that aspect. So you need to make sure that you have an impressive portfolio to showcase your skills in the process, um, maybe some uh, mock templates, maybe some, even if you haven't actually sold your templates, you need to build these templates to showcase what you can do and what you, you know, what you can do for them. And so an impressive portfolio is the obvious thing that you have to have um, along the way. Now, the next thing, number two is a slick sheet slash introduction. If you're not familiar with the slick sheet, it's essentially a one page sort of, you know, one page paper, if you will. Uh, now this should be like a PDF that you're going to send and it's going to have all your skills. It's going to have maybe one or two projects on it. It's going to have, uh, 
uh, essentially an introduction as to you and what your, you know, quote unquote company can accomplish. And it's really important because it's one of the things that a lot of people don't accomplish. And this is how I got freelance work. I created a slick sheet. I um, essentially had my, my name, my number, my email, all my contact information. And then I, I had screenshots along with what sort of services I provided. And at that, in that time, it was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WordPress, a little bit of jQuery. And I had, I had websites that I built to showcase what it is that I was going after and uh, links to projects and my website, of course, where they could find more. So you need to have a slick sheet so that you can not only, if you're ever meeting clients in person, give them something to take with them. Almost think of it as an expanded um, business card with a little bit of your portfolio attached to it. And that's really what the slick sheet is. I encourage you to have that. Uh, my third tip is be willing to meet in person. Oftentimes when you're when you're starting out uh, with freelancing, you're gonna essentially be scraping the bottom of the barrel, and that's okay. And a lot of the a lot of people who don't have a lot of money, but they need to hire a web designer for maybe fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars an hour, whatever your freelance rate is, you're gonna they're gonna be very nervous about actually paying for something they don't understand. And I have found that every client that I ever had freelance, which is only about five or six, I haven't had a ton of freelance clients, is that the thing that really got me to seal the deal with them was just taking an hour out of my day one time to be willing to meet in person and that allowed me to introduce myself it allowed me to showcase what it is that i'm going to try and do for them and how i'm going to help them accomplish their goals and it also allowed me to get better requirements sometimes it's very hard to get requirements over the phone or over the email even through video chats um, a lot of times they just want to see you in person and it's not it's not always possible for everybody for everything but i think it's um i think it's really helpful when you're dealing with people who are on the fence essentially you go in there you shake their hand you talk about what it is you're going to do how you can help some things you can't do sometimes right sometimes it's like look you want me to build uh salesforce on 1500 dollars or whatever it is i can't build your salesforce on that right it's just not pl plausible um and it allows you to, to essentially make sure you're all on the same page. So I, I would highly encourage you to be open your mind, which is counterintuitive because a lot of people, they want freelance because they want to work from home. They don't want to have to deal with people too often. But uh, you're, you're kind of putting yourself in this situation where it's a little bit harder that way. So I'd encourage you to actually be willing to meet in person, at least every now and again. Um, the fourth thing is social media. So uh, this is one of those things where I found so many different professions, web, web dev, web design, freelancing all that is no different where just having a social media presence where you can showcase your work and other people follow you you'll f I, I so with my youtube channel i get on on the regular people emailing me for job offers people emailing me for contract work and uh interested in working with me on various projects social media is a great resource in that aspect because you have now put yourself out there your skills are out there, what it, what you can accomplish is out there, and people um, who maybe otherwise wouldn't know who to reach out to, you're now sort of an authority, you're sort of a figure, so I'd encourage you to social media, and I've seen this happen for a lot of people, there's a, one of you guys added me on um, on Facebook, and you know, there's some, some subscriber, and he's using social media excellently, on his Facebook page, all he does, he does like construction, uh, he builds fences and walls and stuff like that for homes, I see him post video or uh, videos and photos all the time on Facebook, just sharing pictures of the fences that he does. And every time in the comments, you see people, oh, that's really, that's really great. So the networking aspect of social media is amazing because you see people see your work and then all of a sudden like, oh, let me reach out to this guy. And you can do the same thing with, with your websites and web devs. So be willing to uh, network via social media. Um, the, the, um, the, 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 um, I guess that was four or five. What? I don't know. We got two more. That's all that matters. All right. So <laughs> the other thing is there are websites devoted to freelancing. Um, upwork.com is probably the most popular one. I've hired some freelancers in the past off Upwork to help me out on certain things for my YouTube channel. And it has been very helpful. Now, the thing about Upwork is you get rated by your previous client. So you may have to spend some time charging a very low rate and um, competing and in in the international space you may be competing against people who have a much lower cost of living and until you get your 
your your uh, reviews up until you get a couple projects on your belt where people can see like hey this guy had five clients and all five uh you know would love to work with him again and this guy actually did and it's going well you may have a little bit of a hard time getting those more higher end clients but once you have that uh, once you've sort of gone through that that grind that that process you might have a, a much easier time landing some larger contracts so uh one thing that you guys may not know about me but the way that i got my internship and a lot of freelance clients is i would post my slick sheet on craigslist in the looking for work section and that was one way that i was able to get freelance clients a lot of people who you know on the again the bottom of the barrel sort of thing where they just have like a a uh like a furniture store or something like that was one of the ones I worked with and they just needed someone to, to help maintain their website. Okay. Uh, that was $20 an hour for me. That was my first freelance job. I was getting $20 an hour. All I needed to do was maintain their website, update some things, change some banners around some basic HTML, CSS stuff and, and WordPress. And that was my first freelance client. And I, I got several others just po posting my slick sheet on, on sites like Craigslist and um, if I was going to look for freelance now, I'd probably try and work my way up in Upwork. And um, last but not least, uh, I think this is six. Uh, so top six things. Um, but uh, networking with companies and recruiters. Recruiters are something that people don't take advantage of. It's like, why would you network with a, a recruiter? Well, this isn't really freelancing so much as um, there are a lot of corporations that need surge uh, developers. And what that basically means is that a company says, okay, we're taking on a large project. We don't have enough in-house developers. It takes a while to get a good dev. It's not, and hire someone. So it may take you a company all year to hire 15 developers. And you know, that's like a little more than one a month. And so, but you're like, look, we need 15 developers now. So we're gonna, we're gonna contract out to a, 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 a agency that what they do is they essentially give you a developer the next day. Here it is. Is this guy the skill set that you want? Yeah, cool. And now he's working for you. So you might want to consider that. It's not necessarily freelancing so much as you are contracted out and you're contract employee and you have a much more flexible thing. So I work with a ton of, of uh, contract employees at my current role and they're traveling across the globe. They're in different countries a lot of times every every uh, month and so if that's the type of lifestyle you're looking for you can also consider that um it, which isn't again exactly freelancing and when i say networking with companies one of the ways that i've got freelance work is i've reached out to companies that i've worked with in the past uh as an employee as a previous freelancer and i've said as an intern and i've said hey uh i just want to let you know here's my portfolio here's this I am open to taking on some clients, some freelance work. So if anything that you can't complete or isn't in your wheelhouse, but is in mine, I just want to let you know that I'm available to check, to, to work it out, to, to, to help out and, you know, make some money. Or if you have any work that you just want me to do for you, you know, and, and I found that very successful because oftentimes companies aren't going to reach out to you, even if you worked before, unless they... They know that you're open to that sort of thing. So I always make sure to let companies know that I am. Uh, now, be careful with how you, how you say it because if you quit and then you tell them, look, you can hire me contract boy for triple the rates, uh, you might come off as a bit of a uh, dick. But uh, <laughs> um, just be, be, um, be respectful in all things in life including uh, business. Now you can look out for Numero Uno, but just be respectful. So um, those are my, my tips for freelancing. Some things to keep in mind now. Uh, what are your guys' tips, man? So, uh, again, my, my freelancing experience is limited. And if you're looking for more, of course, check out our sponsor at studywebdevelopment.com where they have where he has ebooks and courses and even pers personal mentoring to get you going. Uh, great resources there, guys. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, baby, what do you think about freelancers? I think they're a bunch of hippies that don't want real jobs. Hey guys, if you're looking for a fun little project to do, I have my very first course out called Learn Angular by Projects Part 1 where we build a personal portfolio. It's about three hours of content. It's one project. It's not going to teach you everything in Angular by any means, but it's a great way to get your feet wet. You can go ahead and check the link down below. Get a, a coupon code, Coding God, or just click the icon.